Today, I'm gonna to talk about off-grid power systems, and in particular, I wanna talk about older systems and how to upgrade those. You know, today, more and more people are buying off-grid systems that are already in place. I see it posted all over social media all the time. I bought this system, what should I do with it? Are these batteries any good? Is this charge controller any good? All that kind of stuff. So first of all, let's talk about what an off-grid system is in terms of its main elements. And the, the, there are really only two elements to an off-grid system. And now you're freaked out, right? You're like, what do you mean? There's all these components. No, really, there's really just two elements to an off-grid system. Hear me out. The first is your power storage and delivery system, <laughs> right? That's your batteries and your inverter and your ancillary devices that you use to connect those together, breaker boxes and fuses and that kind of stuff, right? Cables, whatever. The other element is your charging system. Now you probably were thinking I was gonna say solar power, but you don't have to have solar power to be off grid. So you've got power storage and delivery and charging systems, that's it. That's your whole off-grid system in two elements. Each of those elements has, of course, various components that make them work. You could argue, for example, that a power storage and delivery system doesn't need an inverter. True, if you're only using you know, 12, 24, or 48 volt components, well, then you don't need an inverter. You'll still need breakers and fuses and things, but you wouldn't need an inverter. But if you wanna run 120 volt or over the pond there, 240 or whatever it is they run in, in you know, Europe and other countries, then you're gonna need an inverter to convert the DC power to AC power. But that's all part of that power storage and delivery. On the charging side, yes, you could have solar panels or micro hydro or hydro or wind or a generator. There's lots of options there. And in all of those options, you're going to need something that works with them to do the charging. In other words, you can't just take solar panels and wire them up to your batteries. You need a charge controller to go with the solar panel. So that, that's part of that system. Same thing with a windmill or hydro, and with a generator, you'll need a charger, which is essentially the same thing. <laughs> it takes the 120 volt and converts it to the DC power to charge up your batteries with the correct voltages and amperages that you need to get your batteries charged up. So two elements to the off-grid system. Now how does that help you decide how to upgrade? Well, it's actually pretty simple. If you split your off-grid system like that, then there are really only you know, a couple things that you're gonna be worried about in terms of upgrading. One, do I have enough power in reserve? Well, that's your battery bank. Can I deliver enough power? Well, that's your inverter. And do I have enough charging capacity? That's really it. So when you're looking at upgrading a system, if you split it into those two categories, the first, and I think the highest priority for you to look at, is of course your power storage and delivery. Do you have enough batteries? And if you're looking at an older system that you just bought, do you need to replace those batteries? More often than not, I'd argue that you do because you don't know how they were abused or how old they are. And I'm gonna tell you today, with very few exceptions, Life Pull 4s is the answer. They're about the same in price today in terms of total capacity or dollar per watt hour of capacity. They're pretty close in price right now due to the tariffs and stuff. But the truth is you get to use so much more power from them, all of it, 100%. You can discharge Life Pull 4s 100%. But a lead acid deep cell battery? <laughs> you really should not drain it more than 50%. And if you do, you cut its cycle life in half. So that's number one. On the power storage and delivery side of things, the only other equation, frankly, is delivery. If you've only got a thousand watt inverter and you wanna run a table saw that uses 1500 watts, well, that inverter's not gonna do it, so you need a bigger inverter. And if you put in a bigger inverter, you need to make sure that your battery bank is sized appropriately for that bigger inverter. And there are calculators out there you can use to do that. But in short, you need to look at how many amps that inverter is going to draw. That is what you have to do if you're looking to upgrade an inverter. Maybe they sized everything perfectly for a 1000 watt inverter and now you wanna put a 3000 watt inverter in. You're gonna have to look at your cabling, your battery bank, your breaker sizes and all that kind of stuff. 
on the charging side, it's just a matter of figuring out, well, what does my system do now? So if you did an upgrade on your battery bank, let's say you took a 5,000 watt hour battery bank and made it a 15,000 watt hour battery bank, and if the old system would charge that battery bank up, the original 5,000 watt hour one, say in two hours of full sun, so you had like 2,500 watts of solar, well, to get two hours of charging for a 15 kilowatt system or 15,000 watt hours, you'd need 7,500 watts of solar. Or you'd have to accept that it wouldn't get fully charged unless it's in four hours. Maybe then you could do it, but you would still need more power, about four kilowatts of solar. But that doesn't mean that you couldn't put in other means of charging as well, like a generator. I have a 6,000 watt or 6KW generator at my cabin with a charger that's 50 amps, which is about 1500 watts. And since I use about 3000 watts overnight, I only need two hours of charging to get it back up again with that generator and charger. But if I needed more, I could put more charging power in and the generator can handle it. Just a bigger charger would be fine. So when you look at the two elements, you've got your power storage and delivery. It's pretty simple. Upgrade the batteries to the more modern LifePo 4s. That's my recommendation. Unless you're in extreme cold, then your AGMs or flooded lead acid batteries are gonna be better. But even those, when it's minus 40 or below, need to have heat pads underneath them. So really folks, you just gotta be careful no matter what you're running. But either way, you upgrade that battery bank to match your needs. And then you've got the power delivery, your inverter, is it big enough? Does it handle the power you've got? Or do you want to convert it to say a higher voltage so that it uses less amps, smaller conductors, all that kind of stuff. All that's part of that, that main element of your off-grid power. For your charging side, let's say you've got 2,500 watts of solar and you don't want to upgrade it. Maybe you're in an area that you just can't put more solar panels. Well, can you put in Microhydro, maybe you've got a stream with a good head on it that's really flowing good and you can put a little microhydro device in. Can you do that? You don't need as much power from a hydro device th than you do for solar because hydro runs 24-7, 365 as long as the water doesn't freeze up. As long as you got a flowing stream, you can make power all day long every day. So that's a little different. Wind, wind's another option. Though, frankly, I haven't seen a lot of great inexpensive windmills out there. I'd like to see some, haven't yet. Maybe you know of some. If you do, drop it down in the comments down below. Let me know, because I've yet to find one that I'm confident would work really well. And of course, the last option is a generator. I would say, though, that your generator in an off-grid system should be your, your charging means of last resort. That's the way I look at it. I look at it as it's my emergency backup system when I don't have enough solar or whatever to get my batteries back up fully charged before nightfall. If I can't get them charged up in any other means, then I can get my generator running and get that charging back up. And in the winter time, that's when that's more likely to happen for me. I'm gonna be out at the cabin, maybe it's snowing all day, it's dark and cloudy and there's just hardly any or no solar production going on at all and my battery bank's starting to drop down below that 30 to 40 percent range and yeah i'm going to kick my generator on give it a couple hours so that it gets the batteries fully charged and then kick it off and move on that's pretty much it from an upgrading standpoint so let me know what you think did I hit the main points? Did I give you some ideas? Did I help you out? Drop a comment down below. I'd love to find out what you think. And I answer every question, folks. So as long as I can keep up with the questions, I will answer them all, guaranteed. Meanwhile, I'm gonna drop another video right here for you to check out. And I appreciate you watching, folks. And thanks to all my members. Thanks for being there and helping me out. I really do appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. The old jar head out.